Okay, so hello everyone, this is Akshay here and welcome back to the another great day of our GFG Purity Street. Today's question name is minimum distance between two numbers. So the question here is very self-explanatory that we have been given an array of n elements. We need to find the minimum index based distance between two distinct elements of array x and y return. So it should be distinct x and y, right? Return minus one if either x or y does not exist in the array. So for the first test case, let us go back to our um, board again. So x equals to 1, y equals to, y equals to 2. So how many pairs are forming with such distinct elements? Clearly, clearly you can say there are only two possible pairs. That is 1 present at index 0 and 2 present at index 1. Since there are 2, 2, so there will be 2 possible pairs. That is 1 again at 0 and 2 again at 3. What is the difference between the indexes? 1 minus 0 is 1 and 3 minus 0 is 3. What is the minimum among them? Among all the possible pairs, differences of indexes, it is 1. So that is why 1 is the answer. Similarly, for the second test case, the x and y is 42 and 12. And you can clearly see that none of the elements are present here. So that is why it is minus 1. Right? Okay. So when I said, can you think of the brute force technique? What is this dryden showing to you? It is actually forming all possible pairs. Right? So this is your brute force technique. You form all the possible pairs. And if it is distinct, it should be distinct right then you need to maintain the minimum of the difference of the indexes values right okay so let's just have a very quick recap that how many ways we have here so the method one is using would be n square because we will be considering all the possibilities right there would there we'll go with then method two which will uh, where we'll use two variables to store the adjacent of x and y why we are storing adjacent we'll get to it when we are done with the two variable we'll do the same thing using one variable right so do not focus on method two and method three as of now try to code this approach i have written two for loop here right aapko lag raha hoga ki shayad do for loop nahi teen for loop lagega but aap kuch if condition saath kuch karne ki koshish karo math.abs values ko use karo and you will be definitely able to code it in n square right so once you are done with this section so the n here is 10 power 5 right and we are using n square so 10 power 5 square will be definitely 10 power 8 which is greater than 10 power uh, 10 power 10 which is greater than 10 power 8 and that is why this code will not get submitted and we get the TLE for some of the cases let's just verify this thing and then we can proceed ahead with the method 2 and then method 3 okay so you can clearly see here that we have a two for loop and we are checking for both of the cases right that when we are iterating with uh, the for loop using the ith variable and then again a for loop with the jth variable right so it could be it could be true as vice versa as well right that x present in the i iteration and y in, in the j iteration similarly y present as a, a in, in uh, a of i and x present as a of j right so that is why we have written if like this and this and now we need to maintain the minimum value of the differences right so we don't know like it could be the case that uh, let's say one two three and two here right so that could be x and this could be y similarly this could be x and this could be y right and let's say one more one was here so this this could be y and this could be x again right you got the point i guess uh, so x here is one and y equals to two right so x let's say is here uh it is x right and y is here and similarly y would be here so clearly you can see if you do x minus y for these two you will get a negative value and if you do x minus y for these two you will you will again get a positive value so that is why we are taking a abs here and that's it let's just hit the submit button uh, we need a max value to just keep keep the track of the minimum one so let us verify the tle and then we can proceed ahead with the next one great out of one 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 five one zero two one passed okay so this i just explained i spent some time on this approach because many of you are very beginner and you're just starting your coding journey now let us resume with the method one so how do we optimize our brute force technique we see that what are the repeating steps that is happening in our brute force and we try to eliminate and optimize them right so that's the thinking process you need to have so hum isme kya karenge yaar ab hum mein pata hai yaar aap is cheez ko gaur karo let's say Mm, कि आपके पास एक x है एंड यू हैव अ y देन यू हैव अगेन x यू हैव अ y एंड देन यू हैव अगेन x इन लेट्स से सम एलिमेंट्स राइट तो क्या आप बोल सकते हो कि ये जो x y है राइट एंड वन सेकेंड 
ये जो एक्स वाई है और ये जो एक्स वाई है राइट डेफिनेटली इसका डिफरेंस कम होगा इसका डिफरेंस डी वन एंड डी टू राइट दैट मीन्स ये जो वाई है इस वाई के लिए हमें मिनिमम डिफरेंस तभी मिलेगा जब हम इस एक्स और इस एक्स कंसिडर करें एंड वॉट आर वी एक्स वी डूइंग वी आर मूविंग फॉर अ पर्टिकुलर वाई आई एम टेकिंग टॉकिंग अबाउट अ पर्टिकुलर वाई इफ यू मूव टूवर्ड्स द क्लोजेस्ट एक्स तभी हम कह सकते हैं कि जो वैल्यू होगा वो मिनिमम होगा अगर मैं इसके क्लोजेस्ट एक्स पे नहीं गया फॉर दिस वाई फॉर दिस वाई इफ आई सब्ट्रैक्ट वैल्यू ऑफ दिस एक्स दैट इज विच वी आर डूइंग इन फॉर्मिंग ऑल द पॉसिबल पेयर्स तो डेफिनेटली वहाँ से आंसर तो नहीं आने वाला है क्योंकि हमें पता है कि एक एक्स क्लोजेस्ट में प्रेजेंट है तो उससे निकालो ना आंसर आई होप यू गॉट दर पॉइंट सिमिलरली फॉर एक्स एज वेल If we are if you are talking about this x, then definitely इस के जो closest y है, right? And the closest y can be present in either in left half, in the left side, or in the right hand as right hand side as well, right? So we need to just keep the track of the closest neighbors, and that's it. We do not want to track all the possible pairs. I hope you got the intuition here. So that is why I said this a uh, this is the approach where we use a two variable, which we will store the last x index and last y index. Ah uh, yes. For all the x and y, correct? Okay. Okay. So let us continue with the drawing. I have written a skeleton pseudo code here. So for this test case, where the elements are one, two, three, and two, we have made two variables. First of all, the last x and last y. Or it would be more makes makes sense to name this as a d j x and a d j y. That is the adjacent one, the nearest one, right? Okay. An answer. We have an answer with rule that is pointed to infinity. We will return our answer here, right? So we are <coughs> using a for loop going from zero to less than n. Now, if a of i arrow of i equals to x, so we are at this index zero, right? Then definitely this is equals to x. That means you need to first of all update your variable, the last x, right? So I will first of all say that my last x should be updated as i, right? Now I need to track the minimum value. That is the difference of this i and the index of the y we have. That is the recent index or the adjacent index or the nearest y index, right? So last of y here is minus one. So I cannot. That means when I was at this point, I do not have any index which was having a y value. So first, so that means I need to add one additional if that if last y is not equals to minus one, then only you need to check it, right? What you need to check that answer is nothing but minimum of. Answer, comma. Uh, I hope the screen is visible. So let me just scroll it through once more. Yep, I think that's visible. So, answer is equal to nothing but minimum of answer, comma. I minus. Oh, not I minus. We, again, we need to be cautious about the ABS values. So I minus last of y, right? So that is not the case now. The last of i is pointing to minus one, and now last of x has been updated to zero. That is continue with i equals to one. For i equals to one, what will happen? You will see that it is equals to y, right? So it will fall in the else if state, where the array of i equals to y. Now, again, you need to first check that if your last occurrence of x, that is the recent x or the nearest x for this particular i, is present or not, right? So again, and before checking that, also you can you can appoint or you can change your last y value because you have just got a value, new value. So change it to i, and you add an additional if that if last x if it is not equals to minus 1 that means your nearest x exists for this particular i then what we will do you will again store the minimum answer because that is asked by the question so answer is nothing but minimum of answer comma abs of i minus last x right and at last after the end of the for loop you will just say return answer so let's just complete the iteration let's just complete the iteration okay so what is your answer updated to now For this particular i equals to one, your last i was pointing to one, correct? And your last x was not pointing to minus one, so we have to update our answer, correct? So answer is now updated to from minus infinity to i is nothing but one, last x is nothing but pointing to zero. So one minus zero will give you one, so it is pointing to one. Let's just continue the iteration. So for i equals to two, what will happen for i equals to two? It will fall. It will not fall in any of the cases because none of the elements uh, for i equals to two, the element is not equals to x or y. So nothing will happen for i equals to three. What will happen? It is equals. It is equals to y. It is equals to y. So what is the last x we have? That is the nearest x, or is the most, or is the 
adjacent x for this particular y it is zero right so first of all update your last recent y as two we have found as three that you have found a new y right and then try to uh, track the minimum so now the value would be i is nothing but three minus the last x value is again zero three minus what is the minimum among them it is one and if you see that at the last what we have compared one comma three and if you see in the dry run as well there were two possible pairs and we convert and we have compared one and three so i think we are on the same track at this question so i will not do a further dry run but you are highly encouraged to pause this video here try to do some more dry run and try to complete this pseudo code in your code editor right so what is the time complexity here the time complexity is o of n and n is nothing but 10 power 5 as mentioned by the constraints and 10 power 5 is less than 10 power 8 and that is why this will have a green signal and it will successfully get submitted let's just code this pseudocode in a pseudocode editor code editor and then we can move ahead with the method 3 okay great as you can see this is the code written in java let's just hit the submit button we have already seen the compilation passing successfully and yes okay great so the code has been successfully submitted now so the one change you can see here is that I, in the pseudo code i was talking about i but now i replaced with last x minus last y right i want you to think on this that why this code works if i if i have changed this particular thing so let me tell you so this works because eventually we have updated our i into this particular last x variable and in the case of when the array of i equals to y then we have already stored i in the last one that is why this code is working if you replace with last x minus last y with i minus last y then also it will work right and if you replace this last x minus last y with the last x minus i then also it will work right now it's time to uh, see the method 3 so method 3 is nothing but a code optimization you will say the time complexity will remain same but instead of using a two variable we are using one variable here so i will not show you any dry run i'll not explain you anything in this code i want you to pause this video here now try to think how we can do this right and i will directly show the code with you and will give you this as homework okay let me give you a very quick hint so why we how we can use one variable here to store for adjacent x and y so if you see if you see this is your x this is your y and this is your y again right so when i'm at particular x i just need my recent y i do not need my recent x right and when i'm at at recent at my y i just need my recent x to get calculated right so i'm using one variable i'm using one variable that is last index last idx and when i'm at a particular y i will use this last idx to update the value of x and when i'm at x i will use this variable to update the recent value of y right so let me just show you the code i will not show you any dry run we have a last index as minus one as an answer with the max value because we want to track the minimum as said by the question we have a for loop here now instead of having two if we are having just one if and we will handle so we will smartly handle this case right okay so when it is equals to x let's say right and your last index you have to check first of all right it should not be pointing to minus one and also it should not be equal if it is equal then definitely you are actually uh, getting the difference of the same elements right so what where this case is getting hit so let's say when you are at this y right and uh, and your y would be updated your last index would be updated here idx correct you do not want to get the difference of the two same y's right you want x and y so that is why we have an extra and condition to check it and if that's the case then you need to store the minimum and once you have found your array elements as x or y you need to store that particular index as well so that if it is x you store the x for the next y it would be handy and if it is y you store the y index in the last index so that if in the next iteration x come it would be handy right for the next operations and that's a return statement so i will not show you dry run you are highly encouraged to do a dry run for yourself if you are still not able to understand this code because we have done method one and method two and method three is just a slight optimization of the code so let's just end this video here before the ending it let's just see the c plus code as well so that's the c plus code is the same as we have discussed as method two in java uh, you can just omit this as std colon colon but uh, it would still work right and what else 
you will get the all source code in my DSA repository. I'll mention the DSA repository link in my YouTube description. Okay. So in summary, we have We have seen a method one with the O of n square and O of one. A method two with O of n and O of one. Using the two variable that is storing the recent or the last index of x and y. And method three, we saw that we can instead of using two variable, we can even optimize it using one variable. But again, the time complexity would be same, right? Great, yeah. So if this video helped you, maintaining is free, can gain some insights of this question. Do like, share, and subscribe so that I can make video for you for the next GFG question. Till then, keep learning, keep growing. Bye bye, and take care.